what happened. I was like my regular kind of fat. You know what I mean? Like that kind of fat where you look at me and you go, you know, Russell, if you would just run, like once. And that's the problem with being Indian, we get fat. We're born skinny, that's the real problem. We're born skinny, we're naturally a skinny race of people. And we're born skinny and we stay skinny. We don't have to work hard to be skinny. We could be skinny and eat whatever we want and stay skinny. And then we never go to the gym because we're skinny, we don't need to. And our parents don't encourage you to go to the gym. You're like, Dad, I'm gonna go to the gym. What's in the gym? <laughs> they have studies in the gym? No, you're not going to the gym, you stay home and do your studies. <laughs> and because you never tone up, you stay this like really smushy kind of skinny, you know? And you eat whatever you want your entire life, and then at 30, your Indian genes kick in and go, okay, party's over. <laughs> and then you just get fat, and it's like a fucking awful fat that we get. And that's what happened to me. I, I mean, I'm, I'm much older than that now, but I got like a weird kind of fat. I was like my normal fat, and then I woke up one morning, I was like, <laughs> I was like, oof, I'm bloated. I figured I would pee it out, I would sweat it out. I'd be fine the next day. Anyway, cut to a year and a half later, and I'm still, <laughs> And I go, something's wrong. So I go to the doctor, I go, doc, I got fat. He goes, yes. I said, thanks asshole, I didn't come here for confirmation. I came here to find out why I got fat. He goes, well, why do you think you're fat? I said, because um, I have a mirror. And I walked past it naked the other day and I thought somebody else was in my room. Go, oh my God, who's fat, hairy ass is that? Turns out it was my stomach. It was. And people on the internet were calling me fat. You guys are dicks, by the way. You say whatever you want to us on the internet, and if we respond, we're assholes, so we just have to take the abuse. But sometimes I get mad when people say things to me on the internet, not because of what they said, more so because it's probably something I would have said. And then I'm mad that my own words are getting used against me. <laughs> like, I posted something for this TV show I was on, and somebody goes, holy shit, did you eat your whole cast? And I was like, damn it, I would have said that too. I probably would have said that too. And then somebody posted a picture with me and somebody commented and went, Russell Peters looking thicker than a snicker. <laughs> I got mad at that because I love a good rhyme, thicker than a snicker. That's, that's a good one too. I, I, it's not a fair way to describe a human. I think thicker than a snicker is a great way for me to describe my penis. I think that's a wonderful way to describe it. <laughs> so Russell, tell me about your penis. Well, it's thicker than a snicker. <laughs> Equally dark and veiny texture. <laughs> Packed with nuts. And it satisfies. It, uh... <laughs> so I said to my dog, I said, dog, it doesn't make sense that I should be getting as fat as I'm getting. He said, why not? I said, because I don't eat crazy and I, and I train jujitsu every other day. He's like, huh, how old are you now? I said, 48. He goes, and you're Indian? I go, yeah, but he goes, you haven't had a heart attack yet? I said, <laughs> he goes, I said, no, I haven't had a heart attack yet. <laughs> he goes, all right. So he takes blood and I leave. Calls me back in three days later. I go back in. He's like, hey, I got your blood back. I know what's wrong. I go, what's wrong? He goes, it's your thyroid. I go, what about it? He goes, you have an underactive thyroid. I go, so what does that mean? It means it's not doing enough. I said, I understand what the fuck underactive means. <laughs> he goes, then why did you ask? <laughs> I said, how is it affecting me? He goes, the thyroid's making you fat. I go, the thyroid's making me fat. He goes, no, you're doing things too, but the thyroid's really helping. I go, so what do we gotta do? He said, we gotta speed your thyroid up. I was like, let's get that bitch moving, right? <laughs> so it's been a year and a half now, and I, I lost 24 pounds from it, but it wasn't me, it was, you know, it was the medication, it's not me. And I've lost, like, my body's in much better shape than it's ever been, but my fucking head is fat as shit, and I don't know, I don't know how to, you, I, I, I look like a fucking thumb. <laughs> so, you know, so I walk up to the clinic and I'm like, I'm here for my endoscopy appointment. It's in the mouth. She goes, yes, sir, we know where it is. Please come around. Okay. So I walk around and she hands me a hospital gown and says, okay, sir, just go down the hall, take off your clothes, put this on and we'll get started. I said, uh, um, I think there's a misunderstanding here. My doctor upstairs, he told me that this procedure just takes place in my mouth. She goes, that's correct. I go, oh, well then hang on to the gown. Let's just go get started. She goes, no, no, sir, you have to, you can't have your clothes on when we do this procedure. I said, that doesn't make any sense. Because if it's just my mouth you need access to. Nah. 
I'm not, I'm not fighting you on this. I'm not even blocking my mouth. I'm here to help. Pick a chin. Which one do you like? I'll hold it down for you. <laughs> She's like, sir, it's policy that you cannot have your street clothes on when we do this procedure. I said, you know, it's funny you should say that because I too have a policy. And my policy is that I like as many layers as possible protecting my asshole at all times. <laughs> She said, sir, would you just go put the fucking gown on? I said, whoa, you swore. All right. <laughs> so I go down to the change room and I'm standing there and I'm buck ass naked, right? And I start getting really paranoid about my ass. And then I get a brilliant idea. I take the hospital gown and I put it on backwards. <laughs> Smart, right? All right, to protect it. But then I look down, my dick is just swinging, just like. <laughs> look, it's my story. I'll make my penis as big as I want it to be, all right? <laughs> it's India. You're all like, come on, bro. That's. <laughs> it's not even believable, okay? <laughs> not even on a humid day. <laughs> it's true. It was cold in there, too, you know? Just. <laughs> You know what I mean? Just looking like, that oh, was embarrassingly small. Just looked like three coins in a mushroom cap. It was just terrible. It was, oh, it was the worst. Oh, man. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, right, Pratik? You know what I mean? Like, it's, you know what I mean? You just had it shrivel. You ever had it shrivel up so much that you bend forward and it inverts? You're like, hey, where did my dick go? You're like, dick? No dick. Dick? No dick. My black security guys never get that joke. I don't get it. If I bend forward, the motherfucker hits the floor. So I'm like, well, this is embarrassing. So I, uh, I put the gown on the right way and I walk back in the room and uh, she goes, all right, Mr. Peters, just hop up here and we'll get started. So I hop up on the table, but I put my ass right against the wall. Cause like I said, I train jujitsu. If you want to come at me when I'm on my back, it's your funeral, not mine. And she goes, all right, sir, just so you know, during this procedure, we're going to be putting you under using propofol. I said, wait, wait a minute, propofol? Isn't that the shit that killed Michael Jackson? She goes, yes, yes it is. I go, what do you mean? Yes, yes, it is. Why are you so happy about this? 